for example, here is um, here is a man we call uh, a man who suspects of sending his wife a threatening letter, and a report has interviewed him about this letter. And at the end of the interview, he reporter offers to show him the letter. Here we go. Well, she said it was in your handwriting. Well, then she should produce that letter and let's, let's, let's have a look. Have you seen the letter? Yes, I have. Do you want to see it? Yes. And when he says, have you seen the letter? Here we go. Have you seen the letter? That was he says, I want to see that letter. Tell him you see that letter. Tell him you see that letter. Tell him you see that letter. And as soon as he says, I want to see that letter backwards, the reporter then says, do you want to see it? Okay? Say, so here, I'll, I'll play it again. This time I slice the soundtrack and put it right in where the reversal occurred. Well, she said it was in your handwriting. Well, then she should produce that letter and let's, let, let's have a look. Have you seen the letter? Yes, I have. Do you want to see it? Yeah. And you can see, as soon as he says backwards, I want to see the letter, she then says, do you want to see it? Um, I've got instances in reverse of entire conversations taking place, where one person says something, another person says something else, and you can see this whole undercurrent of unconscious communication going on. Take the classic example of boy meets girl and they're talking about the weather. But we all know what they're really talking about. And you can hear those that undercurrent of dy dynamics going on in the reverse dialogue. In my book here, I've got um, a couple of conversations published. I think there's a couple of conversations in there. Alright, so how are we going so far? Questions? We, we doing all right? Yes, no we're doing questions? Right. Okay, all right. I uh, will continue on. Okay, um, let us look at um, some of the uh, therapeutic applications of reverse speech. Uh, I told you when I first started my lecture that I was a youth worker by profession. Um, I have uh, still, uh, still continue in the field of therapy and counselling. Um, I'm, uh, and I use reverse speech. Um, I have a, a very active therapeutic practice. I do all my work over the phone. Um, I have virtually no clients in Australia. Most of my clients are in America or England. And uh, reverse speech will give us, in many cases, um, therapeutically exact directions to work in. Um, for example, here's a woman came to me uh, with money issues and uh, she's talking about her money problems. She and I need to work this issue out but uh, it started to bring up all my money fears and stuff and the thing is is like if I know I start sourcing fear again I'm going to go way downhill. And this reversal says work on my grief. You can hear this. Work on my grief. Work on my grief. Hear that there? And let's run the whole lot backwards. Hear that amongst the gibberish. And you can hear that there amongst the gibberish. So that's the reversals. Her unconscious mind saying, in order to solve this problem with money, you've got to work on my grief. Grief is the issue that she was suffering from. Using regular therapy, we may not have come to that for uh, many sessions. But with reverse speech, we're able to get to it in just one half an hour tape recording. Um, here we have a woman who is suffering from depression, and she talks about the need to get her life back into order again. I started doing something about my life, about the situations that I found myself in. And this one says, need more sunlight. Need more sunlight. And let's run the whole lot backwards. Here it is. So it's right at the very beginning. They need more sunlight. So what she did, as was all of the reversal, she went and took down all the curtains from her window, cut down trees around her house, let in sunlight, and within a few weeks her depression had completely vanished. Um, so the reversals were able to tell us exactly what this woman needed to work on her deep depression. And uh, here we have a uh, young woman who came to me with relationship problems. Um, and uh, she's talking about when her last relationship broke up, she marked it on the calendar. 
<laughs> the night that it happened to my friend Shell, which was telling me about how, you know, what we believe we then create, and it just, it just shifted, and that's when I just... And this one says, I've been molested. Let's see if we can this. I've been molested. Can you hear that then? I'll run the whole lot backwards. Here we go. Could you hear that there, Mr. Yeah. Jimish? I'll play it again. Played the reversal to her and uh, she broke down in tears. Uh, she hadn't told anyone that she'd been regularly molested by her brother for a period of 10 years growing up. She felt so ashamed um, she hadn't told the soul and she wasn't going to tell me. But the reverse speech was able to bring that out and she could talk, talk about it. Um, once again, it pinpointed the exact reason and cause for this person's problem. Um, and I get amazing results in therapy working with my clients. Um, and uh, here we have a woman who's suffering from asthma. And, uh, and she's talking about some unusual mold smells she's smelling in the house. She's left it in there. I have a stuffed towel under the... Um, Door to keep the from coming out. And this one says, under the floor, pus in my head. I'll tell you what it means after I play it. Under the floor, pus in my head. Under the floor, pus in my head. Do you hear that one there? Mm -hmm. you, you don't hear that? No. Okay. I'll play it again. Under the floor, pus in my head. Pus, P-U-S-S. Or P-U-S, sorry. Under the floor, pus in my head. Did you hear that now? Didn't know what that meant, had no idea, but out of curiosity's sake, the husband went and looked under the floorboards of the house and found 18 inches of mould growing under the entire house. Cleaned out the mould and this woman's asthma symptoms dramatically reduced. So how did it appear in her reversals? Because she didn't know it was, there was mould on the floorboards of the house. But her unconscious mind knew. But you and just that, said she smelled mold. She, yeah, she yeah, smelled she knew mold. There was mold in the oh. house. She, yeah, but they didn't know where it was or where it was coming from. No. That's the significance. They didn't know about the floor. There's mold in California all over a house. So. Yeah. 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 Ye
then the odds of that being purely coincidence is astronomical. No, the yes. odds are the odds. If you have you have a sequence that's a hundred minutes, and every you have some period where it makes sense, that that isn't an astronomical chance. If you have so you're saying every fifteen seconds, right. you're, it's something that's going to make sense. You have some sort of periodicity where our brains take in that information and they find something. The brain finds something that makes sense. And you're, you've brought out some examples that are quite striking. Uh -huh. But, so let's look at your daughters. I'm sure you, you take hundreds of hours of their speech. Sure. How many times did you find these pre-verbal children oh. saying something in reverse speech? When they were four months of age, I'd find it once every 15 or 20 minutes. As they got older, they became more free. free frequent. So uh, by the time they're 12 months of age, I might find them once every five minutes. You would find a few words in reverse speech out of the gibberish that they were saying. As they got older, and as they were talking more fluently, reversals happened more and more frequently. So by the time they're speaking forwards, they're happening at the normal rate, about once every 10 or 15 seconds. Right, which is still about what, what would you say? 10% of the time, 5% oh, of the time, yes. so it's very rare. So you're just pulling out these random arrangements of noise that our brain can make sense of. Well, that's, a, that's a fair enough statement, but how many times over and over again has it taken a half an hour conversation with someone, and I have done it as well, mm -hmm. and come up with a transcript of 60 to 70 reversals, mm -hmm play them all, have them all heard by the client, mm -hmm. have the client understand and apply the messages that were there. Mm -hmm. we're and, at the, and at the end of that, come to conclusions that help them come to a result of whatever their conflict is. I think that's a wonderful occurrence, but I don't think it's any different than some other form of therapy where you're having active conversation. We're always looking for clues constantly looking for clues. And some people find clues in, in one manner of interaction with people. You're finding clues in this, this reverse speech. Well, there and is everybody's an kind of makes sense of that. There is an intuitive side to that that's very true. But we are also aware, and, and I applaud your skepticism. That's great. I do tell a lot of people it is an experiential process for you to rationally accept this mm -hmm. just by listening to um, some examples it's a bit tougher than if you were to actually experience it with one of us. I have and experienced the reversal of the records when I was a teenager. I did that. Well, I thought it was a fun I'm talking about your own conversation. When you realize and you can see in the reversals that I document that I pegged what your thoughts were as you were speaking, thoughts that you didn't volunteer to me, People do that, that makes to me a all the time. Well, of course they do. Because <laughs> that's the way people interact with each other. Exactly. People are looking for clues and they hearing, build on very and, subtle clues. And your unconscious mind is hearing the reversals of another all the time. I, I, I just don't see any credence in these reversals. I don't think the brain works that way. Can you hear them? I can hear them because you've primed me to hear them. Oh, well, I've played many reversal without priming. Like, uh, I want a man, uh, it's an honor, uh, I love each day. For some of those, I didn't hear it at all until you primed me, until you told me what it said. I might pick out a, a few sounds that made sense, but I didn't get the whole sequence until you said it. And that's also the way the brain works. When we're, when we're shown a pattern, then we see it. And we can repeatedly start seeing it because now we know we've learned how to look for it. So, it doesn't mean it exists. So how can I put out tapes to students in my classrooms to analyze the tapes? and they'll come back with the percentage of reversals that are the same. If we're projecting into the gibberish, then different people analyzing the same tape should not come up with the same results. If, they're if, all they language, do. if they're all speakers of the same language, then it would make sense that they would. If they're speakers of different languages, then they would hear different sounds. If they're speakers of the same language, I would expect them to come up with the same result from a random set of, of noises because they know how to interpret sets of sounds and they know how to interpret within their language. 
but I don't know that it would still stay on topic. I mean, if you can just come up with any type of sounds and arrange them in a way that makes sense, that's great. But you could be saying, it's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the dolphins. But it seems like all of these come back to the same topic that's being discussed. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the thing that convinced me about reverse speech when I first started. Was it took me many years to be convinced that this was real. But the thing that convinced me most was the complementarity. The forward and the reverse relate to each other. Here, here's an example, and I'm not playing you any of the forward. I'll just play you the backwards at three speeds. Tell me, tell, tell me what, 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 what you hear. What do you hear? I'm the oldest sister. Huh? BG? What did you hear? I'm the oldest sister and youngest sister. And what did anyone else hear? Um, I have an older sister. Yeah, I have an, oh, I have an older sister. sister. Okay. Yeah, no, that's what, what it said. I heard something hit me. Or something about food. You're, you're still far away. Yeah, that's come probably. Come here, come here. Yeah. I, I don't think that... <laughs> I don't think... <laughs> I don't think <laughs> they heard something different. Oh, yeah. so so people, far away. I, I, but I've never heard it before. But, and I heard whatever they're hearing and now they're going to reverse it. We so had two people out. here who hadn't heard it. Mm -hmm. and they heard it Now this is what's being spoken. Forwards, okay. We are, this is what this is an Australian ad original. He's trying to find his extended family. Can't you find out? Um, it's just for word of mouth. And where he says it was just for word of mouth, he says that was I have an older sister. No, but older sister. It's just for word of mouth. No, but older sister. And look what he talks about next. I mean, what, what someone was said to you, something was said to you, was it? Yeah, I just talked to different ones about it because I was on a prime case assist among my sisters. So you found out that you had sisters and brothers? Yeah, I was the only one along, I had one sister. Mm. But uh, in research for her, I found out that there was uh, other brothers and sisters. So the significance of this, he says, I have an older sister first. And then he starts talking about how he found out he had a whole family, family of brothers and sisters. So the reversal of the back of message occurs before he's spoken it forwards, and yet we hear him talking about it after. So I mean I don't know what the odds of that are, but that's got to be pretty, that's got to be pretty high. And uh, here's another one. And uh, sort of gone off track a little bit here. Um, this is. Uh, this is another example where someone says something backwards before they say it for, forwards. S4. You worked at S4? No, that's the area where I was living. Oh my. Okay, here it is backwards. What's she saying backwards? What do people hear? It's uh, It's September. Yeah. It's September. And this is what he says next. Yesterday was September 11th. Uh, it is September 11th on your time. It is still now September 11th. So what's the odds of hearing him saying September 11th, and then the next thing he talks about it being September? I've got hundreds of examples exactly like like that. Man on space one. Classic one. Um, here we have. <laughs> Well, the point here is that this is a verifiable phenomenon, and David has uncovered this phenomenon, which can be verified. I think it can be verified. I mean, you take um, Monash University in Australia did a uh, did an independent study on my test and uh, did an independent study, and what they did. Well, as they uh, picked three groups of people and split them up into, I think, ten people each group. Group one, they played them the reversals and asked them if they could hear it. They told them what it said. Mm -hmm. And then group two, they played them the reversal, didn't tell them what it said. And group three, they played the reversals and gave them control for it. In other words, after they hear a phrase, it was not there. I think, do you know what the percentage rate was? 
something like 70%, 75% of accuracy in the second test. I can't remember the, you know what, I can't remember the percentages. But are. my point um, is that of course we're going to do that because that's the way our brains are designed. I, yes, it is reproducible. He's verified it in a sense because he can repeat it, he, he's shown it in different contexts. But it sounds that our brain is designed to process and find meaning. So but I, I'm not surprised. the meaning is there to be found. This was the problem. That's what I'm saying. The meaning, 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 meaning is designed. And this is one of the steps. Well, one the of the ways our brain is designed is to, is to develop language, to develop a way to communicate. We are, we are hardwired to do that. Okay. We are hardwired to develop We're grammar. communicating in both ways, consciously and you know. Well, see, I don't, I don't accept the unconscious no, explanation. I don't deny that we are hearing these sounds. Huh. That's certainly true. I just don't believe your explanation that there's some sort of some subconscious message that we're generating by somehow making these, uttering our words in such a way that there is a meaning in the reverse direction. I don't, I don't believe that our brains work that way. Then you're not playing examples that you can hear. Uh, yes, I, and I'm, I'm saying here. yes, I can hear it. I just don't believe your explanation for it. So what explanation would you... Would you would? Mine is that we impose order on what we hear. We're looking for language, we're looking for meaning. You admitted that if you played the entire song, there would just be the odd section in reverse that would make sense. Which well, I'm not saying this is happening sense. all the time. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it happens occasionally throughout speech. Yeah. In regular conversation, about once every 15 seconds. In a public speech, about once every two or three minutes. It, 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 the occurrence of it is directly dependent upon the type of conversation. And that's repeat, and that's repeat, repeat, repeatable as well. I can record a room conversation and find them once every 10 or 15 seconds. I record a public speech and only find them once every 3 or 4 minutes. And that's consistent. So why yeah, do you get the different different occurrences in one but not the other? Well, the subconscious mind is always awake and thinking and doing things and we don't really know what it is. We have to bring things to our conscious mind to even speak. Right. So, you know, if there's messages that the uh, subconscious mind wants to tell someone, sometimes you just don't pay attention to those things yourself. It just rambles on and on. Right, and even, so, even if you are skeptical, you have to admit that David is presenting facts here which are verifiable. Yeah, I'm right? not denying that. This is an esoteric science. I'm just saying, it's not a science. Well, it is a science. It's yeah. not a science. We have disagreement. <laughs> someone, someone may have said that, you know, in years past about, oh, there, there's no there's no order in that cliff there. That That's just a, a bunch of dirt, a bunch of mud. And yet we have scientists now that can learn volumes about the history of the land and when earthquakes happened and when tsunamis happened by looking for the pattern in the mud. So yes, I, I agree and I think we all understand that you're correct. We do look to make patterns, or to, to recognize patterns. If we see the tips of a star, our mind will see it as a star. Now we're cautious of that, and we use checkpoints and validity factors to keep ourselves honest. But that doesn't mean there isn't meaning there. It does not preclude the fact that maybe some of what you're finding really does have meaning. Uh, and I'm sure, it's, so some of the instances that he's presented, that seems to be true. So what Scott Peterson it's, seemed you know, very convinced that there was something there. And I don't deny that on occasion there will be some what looks like a clear relationship. I just don't think that there's I meaning just, beyond that. I just don't think I'm creative enough to take someone for a half an hour, spend three hours analyzing the tape and developing the transcript, and then two hours sharing it with them, and have 60 to 70, even 80 statements that they hear and apply to themselves. Mm -hmm. The odds of that happening, I mean, I should be J.K. Rawlings or something by now, wasting my time doing this. I should be writing a book if I'm that creative. Well, then why don't you? Because this seems like a very creative endeavor right here. I mean, I think that in any setting where we're talking with another person, even a total stranger, 
they can learn things about us from our conversation that they pick up in some way we can't define. And suddenly they will reveal truths about us that we didn't recognize but that really hit home. Well, see, I'm saying they're hearing the reversals on an unconscious level. I believe the reverse speech is a communication process. <coughs> and if you talk to anyone for five minutes and hear enough of their reversals, then yes, you can know information about them because you've heard it on an unconscious level through the reverse speech. We've got electroencephalograph tests where at the precise point of reversal start and the precise point of reversal ends, there's rapid activity between the left and right brain hemisphere. So how can we get a reading on an EEG if there's nothing there? I didn't say there's nothing there. I'm just, I don't agree yeah, with your interpretation. What do you think? Well, I was thinking, I'm going to take it aside, but it seemed to me that if you want to disprove this, you can take one of these, um, uh, a lot of these tapes and play them back and uh, to somebody that spoke a completely different language from the same linguistic group. And if that person was picking up messages also in a different language that it wasn't spoken in, well, that would go a long way to disprove the whole theory. Well, I even think it should be outside of the same language group, because many of those sounds that made were gibberish to me had very Chinese-like intonation. And if it's just random sounds, well, then that should prove true. Yeah, and then somebody in a, from another language would be picking up different messages. Have you ever done, done that, tried with different languages? And well, I've trained students who are bilingual in um, Spanish, German, and French. And have they ever listened and heard messages in those different languages? Oh, in their language, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. But sure. only well, when they're speaking the foreign language, right. not when they're speaking... If I'm listening to somebody who's given you a clip in English and I speak Spanish, I'm not going to hear something in Spanish from that clip. Oh, you may do. Well, it depends. Oh. See, if you're bilingual, you can get them in both languages. Even if the person speaking isn't bilingual? Not... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, that's no, no, the no, point. No, right. no, 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 sorry. Sure. I, I misunderstood yeah. the question. Yeah, you no, would no, have I, to be... I don't know why you wouldn't, though, because... Uh, what we're doing, what we're, what we're dealing with is electronic sound and how it's laid down. And how I perceive that sound is important to me. It might not be important to you. If I hear it and, I, and I'm a Spanish speaker, I might hear one thing on that track. English, I would hear it in something else. And if I had French, I would probably hear it in something else again. So, yeah, I, I'm curious about that too. You say you've got your multilingual students, right. uh, do they pick up anything other than just their own language? Their, their no, they're finding German in German and English in English, mm -hmm. except if the person is bilingual. If they're speaking two languages, they'll find reversal in both languages, English as well as German. Have you ever, you know, I had a friend one time, that we were at, in Tijuana actually, and we were speaking Spanish to somebody mm -hmm. who spoke four languages. And he, um, uh, he just got all mixed up, and he couldn't contain them all. He was speaking in some in Russian, and some in <laughs> Finnish, and some in Spanish, and some in English, and it didn't make any sense to any of it. But I wondered if any of you, it just occurred to me, if in any of your experiences, if somebody that was, say, bilingual was bringing forth a message in a different language, or parts of a different language, that, you know, reflected their background. In, well, in their own language, but not a different language other than what they speak. Well, yeah, but in one of the ones they speak. Oh, they sure. Yeah, 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 in one of the ones they speak. Yeah. Um, one of the, let me, um, I, uh, I want to get back to the Monash University tests that they did. It, the, 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 they had similar objections to you. In the tests, they actually acknowledged that the backward messages did exist. They wrote that. They said that, obviously, it's that word. For any, for any uh, forward sequence, we would expect that there would be backward sequences as well. We don't deny that Oates has been successful in finding these. But yet they discounted the theory on reverse speech because it wasn't linguistically sound. And that was, that was their, their, their objection. My statement, and I've lectured to other professors and people, and, um, and no one has ever denied that the backward messages exist. But they'll come back with, this is coming. So that you take any speech and run it backwards, you're going to find intelligence sentences. My argument is, 
how can you get them happening so frequently in grammatically correct sentences that reveal relevant information about the um, speaker? I mean, I'll work with clients and I'll find the names of their kids, what they did last week, the week before last. I'll find relevant information about their life. I'm not psychic, at least I don't think I am. How am I finding that information? How am I finding valid information in reverse if it's just the brain trying to make sense out of it? I'm sure if I talked to people in this room, I would find remarkable coincidences that were just astounding coincidences. Just, uh, and this, uh, to me, a group of strangers, I only know one person before I came in here. I'm, I have no doubt there would be incredible coincidences. And let me just quote a famous statistician on that exact fact. Just because something has a likelihood of happening one in a million times doesn't make it any less important if it happens to you. It's just, it's chance. I mean, it, no matter how rare it is, and you've admitted that it's rare, that in a oh, sequence no, no. of a song... I'm not saying it's rare. I'm saying it's once every 15 seconds in speech. In a Free song. Rare. That's not rare. No, even in a song, you're still... going to find most of it is gibberish. In I'm not, but text. I'm not looking at songs. I'm looking it's, at well, speech. I'm just looking someone, at a If someone text. is reading from a book something that has been written, something that has been communicated by writing it out, composing it, writing it out, mm -hmm. then it, you, there's not going to be a lot of um, um, spontaneity mm -hmm. in whoever's reciting that. It's pre-written. Mm. It's such as someone doing a speech that will find it maybe once every three minutes. Mm. Because it's not, it's not spontaneous. It's mm. not them communicating one to another, being in that actual act mm. of communicating. What about, have you ever studied so, poetry with this? Because poetry would, in, in many cases, be awfully spontaneous. More so, perhaps, more than so poetry. Poetry? Poetry? Never have. Never have. might be no. fun to do. Huh? No. Mm -hmm. Especially because some it, real free-form poetry that, you know, right. that, that sometimes the author wouldn't even know what he or she was saying. Mm -hmm. Well, again, it's not actually the specific words, although, of course, linguistically, it doesn't mm -hmm. depend on some of the sounds that we're making, but it depends on how someone's saying it, how it's spoken. But I think you're, you're correct. If someone's reading a piece of poetry that really touches their heart, they begin to emote, and it's in that emoting is where the reversals are going to come out. So, so, so the reversals are more in the in the speech patterns than in the words themselves. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. oh yeah. The emotional yeah. charge as well. Yeah. yeah, two people can say exactly the same sentence and you get different reversals in both same sentences. It's not the words; it's the sounds of the speech. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah. you know, I'm can say I'm talking to you now. I could say I'm talking to you now, and I said that mm -hmm. same sentence Sound. differently, and then you get different reversals. Mm -hmm. We've tried to reproduce reversals, try to get the speech exactly spot on as the original way it was captured on tape. We can get close, but we can't reproduce it exactly. Not that no. same song, no, the, fluid, that the fluid feeling sense. of it, yeah. the fluid sound. Yeah. David, has your work with law enforcement agencies actually resulted in the conviction mm -hmm. of criminals accused of certain crimes? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it has. Um, other than the case that worked in Australia where they found the murder weapon um, in the cellar. But I would say uh, he, he was convicted, but it won't, I wouldn't say reverse speech resulted in the conviction. No. no. And, and have you done work with a number of American law enforcement agencies? I've worked with Dallas Police twice, and uh, Jack Johnston up in Ashton, Oregon, has worked with the Oregon Police on a couple of cases. So, and his, he's actually uh, teaching a class at the university up there. He in, in, university. Is, is he still teaching that class? I don't think, I don't think he moved to Canada. Canada. Right. Yeah, uh, there, w one of my trained practitioners in Oregon was teaching a class at the Oregon yes. University on reverse speech. That was a uh, optional extra in the Oregon State Police's training course. So that's the closest we've got on that one. Uh, yeah, um, all right. So um, where shall we move on to from here? Um, I was talking about reverse speech to therapy, so let's continue talking about it. Here we have um, here we have a relationship, a young couple I'm working with right now. Let's uh, and they're talking about the relationship. Oh, Ron, where do you see the future of you and Sarah?
think it does something that um, changes a lot, but it's also, I think, become somewhat of a day-to-day -day thing with us. Now, reverse speech says that we are all running sabotage patterns. This guy is running a major sabotage pattern. Listen to this one. This is a long set. Let's even hear what this one says. What do you <coughs> no, no one heard that one. Okay, but I must muck it. I'll play it again. But I must muck it. I must muck it. Muck it. Muck it. M-U-C-K. Muck. Muck. To cause problems. To mess it up. To muck cause it up. chaos. Eh? Muck, muck it up. To muck it up. Absolutely. Yeah, to muck it up. So this is a sabotage pattern that he is running in his relationship to cause it to constantly not work. Uh, reverse speech says that we run all sorts of sabotage patterns. Here we have... Um, these are all the sort of things I find in therapy. Here we have another one. Fear of doing it on my own, although there's another part of me that likes to do it on my own. And this one says, I am wanting new grief. Oh, I am wanting new grief. Oh, I am wanting new grief. So this is a woman who will have grief in her life and she won't know why and but she'll constantly have grief coming into her life. I work with sabotage patterns all the time. Um, in practically every tape I do I will find someone with a money block or relationship block and they'll say I don't want this money or I don't want to be happy and in order to work with that you've got to change the unconscious and I'll get on to what I do to change the unconscious in a little bit. Yes? Just curious, uh, it's kind of an obscure thought, pardon me, I have a cold, but um, <coughs> if somebody's signing, you know, the deaf person is signing, I wonder if it was reversed if somebody would analyze that and see if there's, you know, similar things going backwards. If someone's Signing, you know, like sign, sign, language. sign language. Oh, signing! Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> Just a thought. No, I have no idea. No, I don't know. Yeah. No, I don't know. Whole new area of research. Yeah, yeah whole new area. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we have a businessman. Okay, so on that question, <laughs> what needs to happen to keep it moving? Uh, what do I need to do to keep it moving? I need to stay on top of what. Uh, on top of my office work. Uh huh. Uh, you know, keeping up with my quotes and getting them out on time and my following up on time. And this one says, My ass again, I am an idiot. <laughs> so, uh, have you ever walked through the house and speeded yourself up? Uh, this guy is beating himself up. He's telling my ass again. Ass is a metaphor in reverse speech for low self-respect. I am an idiot. So he is beating himself up on an unconscious level all the time. So in order to change this man's patterns, we have to change the unconscious. And I'll play a few more simple examples, and then I'll go into how I change the unconscious mind. Um, ever been in a relationship and wanted to know whether it's going to work or not? Here's a young man who came to me about his relationship. Five years on my own, travelling, bouncing around, recovering from one relationship, and now I'm in another relationship now. And, and this one says, this is shallow, abandon it. <coughs> this is shallow, abandon it. This is shallow, abandon it. Did you hear that there? This is shallow, abandon it. Okay. And here we have another woman in a relationship and she's talking about whether she should stay in her relationship or not. And let's run this one. I can ruin my relationships with my children if I continue to be involved with them. So I, the point this morning is, do I walk away? And where she says, do I walk away, which is this here forwards. Yeah, well, we're, we're, oh no, sorry, that was backwards. Alright, what you saying backwards? Here it is. Yeah, we're, 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 we're
us very well. It knows the decisions that we should make and do, and in this case, the unconscious is telling her to walk away from the relationship. Alright, let us go down just a little bit deeper still. Reverse speech. All the reverses I've played to you so far tonight have all been in regular, normal, everyday English, okay? But over half of all the language in reverse speech speaks in met in metaphor, using, using words like wolf, lancelot, goddess, garden of Eden. Here we have a uh, classic metaphor. This is me talking to a client who had a nervous breakdown. And uh, here is my thoughts. You are striking as a very enthusiastic guy. I mean, certainly the time we've been together, you've got all full of ideas. Um, is this latest? Is this just a latest idea? Is it just all froth and bubble? Or do you really want to get out? Do you really I really want to get out. See, a little for. Alright, and this one, listen carefully, see if you can hear what this one says. It's a long sentence. See, a little for. I mean, that See, a little for. I mean, that ain't. Anyone hear anything there? See, a little for. I mean, that ain't. Yeah, wolf. You got wolf. Anything else? No? See, the, huh? Lake. Lake, yep. Yeah. Okay, wolf and lake. Actually says, see the wolf fallen in the lake. 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 And like I said, it takes me a good year to train someone to the level to hear the reversals without help. The fact that you heard wolf and lake means the words are there, but don't expect to hear them immediately on the very first night. It's like learning to, learning to uh, understand someone who speaks with a thick <coughs> accent. It takes a while to get used to the sounds, and so, and so, uh, it takes, it takes, it takes a while. We have, uh, we have uh, what we call our reverse speech checkpoints, and uh, all reversals must meet certain linguistic requirements. They must, the syllable count must be correct. The constant of vowels and hours must be clear and precise. The uh, beginnings and endings of words must be clear. There must be a gap in the reverse between the gibberish and a gap at the end of the gibberish. It must have a sing-song tone to it. Now I'll run this whole lot backwards. You'll notice how there's a gap before the reversal and a gap after the reversal. And the reversal will have this nice melodic sing-song tone. Can you hear how clear that is amongst the um, gibberish, how that jumps out and you've got that gap before the reversal and a gap after the reversal? So that's one reference to the word wolf. Wolf is a very common metaphor in reverse speech. We find that, uh, find that practically every uh, tape I do with a client, I'll get some reference to the metaphor wolf. Here is uh, me, you, the metaphor wolf. Well, you were talking forwards about, uh, you know, you're working late, you're not doing any exercise, so you're very tired. And that was the context. And what does this say? I was no wolf. I was no wolf. I was no wolf. I was the 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 wolf. And let's see here. I'll run the whole lot backwards. You can hear the monks of gibberish. Once again, it has a gap. Notice the gap before and the gap afterwards. Quite clear. 
Alright, let's look at another metaphor. These are, I'll tell you what they mean.